Now, I would like you to take a look at our picture. What do you see in this picture? Very good! You see a water hole. And what's happening at the water hole? Animals of different types are gathering there to drink water. Okay? Yes, what else do you see? Aha! You also notice that there's different types of animals in the background that are busy feeding. An elephant under the tree who's busy feeding. He is depending on the leaves of the tree for his food. But beside a living organism, depending on another living organism for survival, what else have we realized? We realized that the animals also depend on things that are not alive, things that are non-living in their environment in order to survive. For example, the water. These animals are all dependent on the water for their survival. These organisms are also dependent on the air around them for survival. What else do we see? Another non-living component is the sunlight. Our living organisms, such as the plants, are dependent on that sunlight in order to make its own food during the process of photosynthesis. This is another example of a living organism dependent on a non-living component in the environment in order to survive. Now, a particular area in which the living components are interacting with each other as well as with the non-living components is called an ecosystem. So what have we discovered? We have discovered that within an ecosystem, they are both living as well as non-living components. The living components, such as the people, the animals, the plants, are referred to as biotic factors. All the non-living components, such as the rocks, water, air, wind, temperature, light, all of these components make up what we call abiotic factors. Let's move on. Our first focus would be on abiotic, which are the non-living components in an ecosystem. There will be seven important abiotic components that we will be learning about during these videos. The first abiotic component that we will be looking at will be the physiographic factors, edaphic, which are the soil factors, light, temperature, water, atmospheric gases, and wind. The first abiotic factor that we will be looking at is physiographic factors. What is this? This is actually the geography of the area, children, and it includes factors such as aspect, slope, and altitude. When I speak about aspect, I'm speaking about the direction in which the slope is facing in relation to the sun. When we speak about slope, we are talking about the steepness or the flatness of an area. And when we speak about altitude, we are referring to the height above sea level and this is measured in meters. Let's begin with aspect. Now children, aspect refers to the position of an area in relation to the sun. Okay, now children, remember, the vegetation on a north-facing slope is going to be very, very different from vegetation on a south-facing slope. For example, let's look at South Africa. Now, South Africa is in the southern hemisphere, okay? You will find that the north-facing slopes here get more direct sunlight than the south-facing slopes. Look at our picture. Look at our north-facing slope, how bright it is. 
Look at our north facing slope. Look at the amount of sunlight it is receiving in comparison to a south facing slope. So what will we find? Because the north facing slope is receiving more sunlight, it's going to be warmer, it's going to be drier and the plants there are going to grow very, very well in sunlight. The, however, the south facing slopes are going to be much cooler and wetter, right? Where the shade plants like the ferns are going to grow very well. Let's look at slope. Now the slope of a mountain affects the rate of water runoff. What does water runoff mean? Well, it's nothing more than water running off the land surface. Okay? You will find that a steep slope's water runoff is faster than a gradual slope. And soil erosion will occur more frequently in these types of slopes. Now the steeper the slope, the more soil erosion is going to occur. What is soil erosion, children? Yes, soil erosion takes place when the top fertile soil, right, is carried away by strong winds or maybe by heavy rainfall. Then what happens to the land? It becomes rocky and the soil on it becomes very, very infertile. Therefore, fewer plants and fewer animals will be present in this kind of land. Let's move on to altitude. When we speak about altitude, we are referring to the height above sea level. Right, children. Now, areas high above sea level, example, look at our picture, the mountain tops, they experience extreme weather conditions such as strong winds and even snow. Now, plants and animals that occur high above sea level are different from those closer to sea level.